Hello and welcome from the technical support team at DI. Using the DI system takes some practice. In this short video series of explanation, we will go over the two most important points of operation so you are clear on how to get the best results when you first begin to use your DI. If you are well practiced using an ophthalmoscope, the DI works the same way. You must get as close as you can to the pupil, one centimeter, at a slight angle so you can see the red glow from the reflection of the fundus and find the optic disc. The good news is that the DI lens eliminates corneal glare so it should be easier to capture good scans of the posterior pole of the eye. Hello and welcome from the technical support team at DI. Using the DI system takes some practice. In this short video series of explanation, we will go over the two most important points of operation so you are clear on how to get the best results when you first begin to use your DI. If you are well practiced using an ophthalmoscope, the DI works the same way. You must get as close as you can to the pupil, one centimeter, at a slight angle so you can see the red glow from the reflection of the fundus and find the optic disc. The good news is that the DI lens eliminates corneal glare, so it should be easier to capture good scans of the posterior pole of the eye. Chapter 2. Choosing Your Exam Type The DI application offers two types of exams, multi-shot and video. Video is preferred when learning how to use your DI because it allows for an extended time to view the posterior, including the optic disc and surrounding structure while getting used to aiming the lens. Upon conducting an exam, it is best to take 30-second videos so the file does not become too big. Take several videos, save the ones you want, and discard the rest. Click on Retinal Screening. Write in patient's name. Choose right or left eye. Choose video. Click Start Examination. It's that easy. Chapter 3. Viewing and Scanning the Midriatic Eye A dilated eye is easier to scan when learning how to use your DI. A dilated eye provides a wider field of view, about 20 degrees or more, so it is easier to aim and find the optic disc. There are important steps that need to be followed so that your smartphone camera will focus properly to ensure crisp and in-focus results. The autofocus of the smartphone camera will begin to adjust as you move closer to the pupil. At about 6 inches to the eye, click the red button to start the video and move the lens so that it is close to the pupil as possible, 1 centimeter. When you see the red reflex from the eye, the DI has been correctly aligned and focused. To view the right eye, hold the camera vertically. For the left eye, hold the camera horizontally so the patient's nose will not block your attempt to get the lens as close as possible. On the screen, all you should see is the outer edge of the iris and the pupil. You should see a red glow. Chapter 4. Viewing and Scanning an Undilated Eye Choose myotic eye where you will see three choices depending on the refractive error of your patient. In the early stages of learning how to take scans of an undilated eye, you need practice before attempting to record videos. Chapter 5. The camera lens should be one centimeter from the pupil. Often, first-time users are too far away from the pupil. Too far away can be three to five centimeters, far enough that you will not see much of the posterior. So don't be shy. Move the lens in as far as possible without touching the eye, so all you see is the outer edges of the iris on the outer sides of the screen. The closer you are, the greater the field of view. Just like looking through a keyhole, the closer your eye is to the keyhole, the more field of view. Same when aiming at the pupil. Training yourself to move the lens in as close as possible so that you increase the field of view is also a very important learning curve. 